Welcome to another episode of Mexican The Kitchen. Today I'm going to make a recipe that I like quite a lot. I grew up with this recipe because it's a kind of taco that you can find everywhere in my city. And in other parts of Mexico it might not be as common. You might find some in Mexico City and now in other states they have started to go around. But it's something that was born specifically in my city, Puebla City. And these are Arab tacos. They're called Arab tacos because they come from Lebanese and Middle Eastern immigrants. So when a lot of these immigrants came to the city, they started to look for something to do. And of course, one of the things they thought of is we have shawarma, is this spit where you put layers of meat and usually they make it with lamb. In Mexico, lamb is a bit expensive, it's not so common to find, and everyone eats pork. In whole Latin America, everyone likes pork a lot. They eat pork also because it's very cheap, it's nice, it tastes really good. So they substituted the lamb for the pork. They still use the same kind of recipes from shawarma. They started making these layers with some pork, some onion, spices, etc. And of course it continued evolving because they would make it first with some corn tortilla. They would make what we call now oriental tacos in which you have just a corn tortilla, some meat, that's it. But of course people start asking in Mexico always, do you have something spicy? And then that's how they started making some of this chipotle sauce. It's a very specific chipotle. They burn a bit the chilies, they make it. It's now that kind of sauce is specifically known as uh, Arab taco sauce. After that, they also started adding the pita bread. So now you have this like common Arab bread where you have the Arab taco and then you have oriental taco if you use the corn. And those kind of things started evolving. It became a fusion of Mexican and the Middle Eastern cuisine. And now we have Arab tacos everywhere. If you ever go to Puebla City, you should try this. And now I'm going to make kind of a home version of this. It's very hard to get it right at home because you need the speed, you need a bit of the coal, like burning the meat, getting a bit of the chars, like crunchiness. But we'll do something that has the same style, has the same ingredients. It tastes quite close and you can make it at home. It's quite easy. Hope you like it. For making tacos arabes, we're going to need a very lean meat. And that's why I chose pork tenderloin. You can of course choose any kind of meat you want, but I would try to get something that doesn't have a lot of fat, that doesn't have a lot of these like chewy parts. And I will just start by slicing it into very thin slices. This will give us a bit of a closer feel and texture as you would get from the spit. But of course I've seen people chop it into really small cubes or kind of almost into pulp and that will work anyway, but I prefer this way. I know in Mexico you can already buy these kind of really thin pork steaks. If you buy those, then you don't have to cut it yourself. That would probably be easier. Of course, it depends on what you have available where you live. The next step is chopping some onions. I'm going to make it into strips. I'm using four small onions, but of course you can use more or less depending on how much you like this. Usually they will make the speed by making the layers of meat, onion, meat, onion. And at least in my city, when they make this kind of spit, the cheaper the place, the more onion they will add. But personally, I think it tastes really good. So you shouldn't be really afraid of adding a bit too much. Now that we have the meat and the onion ready, we're going to set them aside and start preparing the seasoning for our meat. For this, I'm going to start by adding one small onion or half a large onion. I'm going to add one quarter of a cup of cooking oil which is about 60 milliliters. Next, I'm going to add some cumin. You can add it ground or like this. It doesn't really matter because you're going to blend it anyway. I'm going to add six or seven pieces of black pepper. I'm going to add three or four pieces of clove, a bit of salt, a garlic clove. And if you have been following my videos, you might know that my blender is not the best. So I blend everything a bit before adding some more oregano. But if your blender is decent, you don't have to blend separately, just add everything there. I'm adding one and a half tablespoon of oregano. I will blend everything together and after that I'm going to chop on the side some parsley. Here in Finland they sell parsley in very small amounts, but of course if you like parsley and like the taste, you can add as much as you want, because this will give a lot of the flavor. Now I'm going to mix everything together to make the marinade. I'm going to start with the juice of three limes. Then I'm going to add the mix I made. This is a bit oily, but you will notice it starts mixing with the lime juice. We'll take a spoon and make sure everything mixes nicely. 
then we will add our parsley and as I said you can use a bit more parsley than I used you can add enough parsley that this will become more of a paste but it doesn't really matter because at the end it will still give a lot of flavor to our meat at this point we can mix everything and we can continue with our recipe now that we have the meat, the onion and our marinade ready I'm going to show you the process here I already started but I think it's better if I show you a bit of the middle of the process it's basically the same you just start adding layers of meat then add a bit of the marinade I'm going to use one of these brushes you use for baking just to make sure the marinade goes all over the meat and everything gets a bit of these flavors then I'm going to start adding on top of that a bit of the onion just make a bit of a layer a bit of a bed for the next layer of meat and then just repeat repeat all over until you use all of your ingredients once we are done and we have used all of our ingredients we can continue and just put a lid on the container or just use some plastic or whatever you use to cover it and throw it into the fridge i would recommend leaving it there for at least an hour but if you can do this the night before then that will be even better if you do that you might see the meat turns a bit darker but that's just the lime i don't have dried chipotle so i'm going to improvise a bit with the sauce i'm going to use a jar or a can of chipotles in adobo you can find them everywhere even in finland it's quite easy to find in normal stores i'm going to use a bit of water just to rinse a bit the container get all of the sauce out of there i'm going to add four or five garlic cloves i'm going to add 40 to 50 milliliters of apple vinegar if you're not a huge fan of vinegar just add it slowly add little by little and keep tasting i'm going to add a bit of salt about one half tablespoons of oregano and i'm going to blend everything you will notice it has a beautiful color this is one of those sauces that i wouldn't eat with tortilla chips because it's not quite my flavor but when you mix it with the tacos it goes perfectly well now that our sauce is ready we can continue with the meat it has been in the fridge for quite a while now for this i have a pan on a five out of six so i want it to be quite high fire i want it to be really hot because i want to put the meat in there and i want the meat to get a really nice sear, really nice color get it into a bit of this brown golden kind of color it gets this is because if we put it into a lower heat then our meat will start to boil it will release a lot of the liquid and we do not want that since we sliced our meat quite thin you have to keep an eye because it might dry up quite quickly and it might burn quite quickly so just keep an eye on it and once it gets this brownish color then we can take it out set it aside and continue grilling our meat when grilling the meat i'm kind of trying to avoid the onion of course it doesn't matter if we get some pieces in there but at the end we will have a lot of it left over and at this point we're going to just throw everything into the pan there might be a bit of small pieces from the meat it doesn't matter just throw it in there and we're going to cook everything until the onion has a really nice brown color at this point our onion is ready and we can set it aside this meat is so tender we could just have tacos with the meat as it is but we want to make it look and feel like that kind of meat you would get from the spit so in this case i'm going to cut it into small pieces what kind of pieces you cut it's up to you you can cut it into small strips i'm cutting it into these small squares and I think that gets quite close to the real thing usually in my city if you order tacos arabes you can also order some lavi which is kind of yogurt which they take and remove all the liquid from it so it becomes kind of a cheese cream cheese consistency in this case I couldn't find that here so I'm going to just substitute this with some Greek yogurt this is optional but of course I like a bit of the freshness that it gives to the dish usually we prepare this with some fresh onion some fresh chilies a bit of olive oil and just mix everything and then you can add it to the taco you can use some jalapenos but i found these chilies in the middle eastern market and this is exactly what i would use in mexico so i'm going to go with this it's a bit more spicy now that all my ingredients are ready i'm just going to warm my pita bread a bit this step is optional because this bread is perfectly fine if you eat it as it is but I like to put it in the pan just for a few seconds on each side now I have my pita bread ready I'm going to add a bit of my yogurt of course if you can find the lave that's even better now we add the meat I already added the onion in there so we'll have meat and onion mixed together they complement each other quite nicely so this will taste great 
once the meat is ready, I'm just going to squeeze a few drops of lime juice in there and I'm going to top everything with my hot sauce. Now we just have to roll our taco. As you can see, this is a massive pita bread, so if you can buy smaller ones, it's of course easier. If not, you can just roll it and cut it in half. And also, you can add some cheese, you can use corn tortilla, wheat tortillas, you can use the pita bread. These are all things you will find in the usual Arab taco place. This is how I make Arab tacos. I really like using this Arab bread, like this pita, because it's quite thick, it has a nice texture, it goes so well with the meat. If you add the labe, in this case we use the Turkish yogurt, but if you add that, it gives a bit of the creaminess, then you have the spiciness of the sauce, it's a really nice meal. I hope you liked the video, try at home, press like, subscribe, all those kind of things, and see you in the next one.